Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today you're joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark for something a little bit different to my usual boat life videos. Today I want to talk about my love of writing and pens and dip pens and all sorts of stuff like that but I specifically want to start by showing you a close-up and a look at something I've only just got and I think is absolutely beautiful and a fascinating object and pen. This, my friends, is a glass pen. Hopefully the camera's focusing on that, but we'll dive in and have a much closer look at this in action very shortly. Um, this is also going to be the first in a new series of videos on this channel, which I'm going to declare as the uh, Nerd Ahoy series, where I basically am going to share with you every so often uh, just some of the things that I love that are slightly out of the mainstream, things like tabletop board games and uh, random things like my model railways and writing and my love of pens and paper and pads and stuff like that, and just things that people may know are a thing that people enjoy but not necessarily the sort of thing you come into contact with or ever give a second thought in day-to-day -day life but you may enjoy. Anyway without further ado let's get a look at this absolutely extraordinary object in action and have a look at some of my other rather uh, curious pen collection. Right let's get stuck in. So we're going to start with a very sped up unboxing as there really isn't much to say about the box. It's made by Herbin, they're all individually made, they're made in China, this cost me just under 20 quid, it's the sort of thing I imagine personally you could probably pick up cheaper or more expensive depending on where you were buying something like this from, but if we have a look at the details of the nib before we see the full length of the pen in just a moment, you can see it's got those spiral grooves on it which when you dip the end into a bottle of ink, those grooves are where the ink stays and obviously runs down to the nib as you're using it and my goodness me it looks absolutely amazing it looks almost like ice or water here with the way that the light is refracting through all of the grooved glass at the end however once that's been in some ink you can really pick out the spiral shape and it looks absolutely fantastic especially using the purple ink that we're going to use here today and another thing that I think is fascinating, it actually says on the box that you can use a piece of fine sandpaper to sand down the nib if it gets dull or if you want to sharpen it up. So well, that's a fascinating thing. So I'm going to dip the end in here. As you can see, I'm nervous about how much to put on because I didn't want it to blob ink everywhere at first. But I realised pretty soon that you could risk putting the whole of the tip and all of the nib into the ink and it's not going to have too much trouble as long as you let the first bits drip off back into the inkwell. Um, yes, I'm going to hand you over to my real-time reaction and the sound of the pen. I've had to change this bit to a voiceover sort of section because I was so excited I really lost focus. I simply say. Oh my goodness me, that's fantastic. Hello there, folks. I am... I am, as I've actually written, <laughs> writing with a glass pen. That, you know what, my friends, that's incredible. I feel, if I fetch that up, now just off the top of my head, I feel like you can tell that ink has drained away from some of these top, uh, upper parts here. But that's absolutely extraordinary. It writes so well and so smoothly. And let's just have a, a moment of peace here. Now, see, this is where it gets really nerdy. The the love of um, the just the art, not the art of writing, because I write terribly, but I still love it. But the the act of writing and that the sounds of the pen scraping and stuff. Let's just appreciate this. Oh, look at that. We're actually, you can see now that we've run out of ink. You can see how light it's all gone and how quickly the ink's all drained away. Look at that. This is fantastic. This is, this, I'm not joking right now, 
this is possibly my favourite bit of, uh, my favourite writing instrument. Not the most practical, obviously, but this could be my favourite writing implement I've ever had. Now, I swear that that sentence does indeed read the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. However, I uh, am open to uh, accept it's not the greatest handwriting. As you just saw how beautiful that nib looks when it's highlighted in the faint bit of purple after the ink's worn away. What I'm going to do now is just draw some lines in rapid succession to see how quickly you can drain away the ink from the nib before the ink in the upper part of the nib rolls down to the tip of the pen, if that makes sense so you can see here I run out of ink just there but already when I put the pen back down the ink has just followed down the spirals to the nib once again and well I don't know I've got to say I'm impressed with its general performance hello there folks So my friends, I got a little bit carried away talking about the glass pen for so long, so we're going to very briefly go through some of my other pens and why I like them, and I'm going to keep this quick so this video doesn't go on indefinitely. With a very brief look, this is something you might have seen in my videos where I'm writing my wax sealed letters. This is a dip pen set with a load of different size nibs, and of course you just change the nibs over, there's a little extra clip that keeps a bit of ink on the nib, and you just dip it in ink and start writing. Hopefully I've put on the screen some footage of me creating a proper wax seal, which is literally exactly what it looks like, melting some wax onto an envelope and then stamping a metal seal into it. I absolutely love sort of traditional old style stuff like that. Again, I do live in the past to a certain extent, sadly. So moving on, talking of living in the past, this beautiful creation, my friends, is an Osmeroid 65, which dates from around the 1950s. And this was very popular in schools by all accounts. So a lot of children back in the old days would have likely learnt to write with a pen such as this. And what's interesting about this is it's actually a lever filled pen. So you would dip the nib in the bottle of ink or an inkwell, pull this little tab up here, which would stretch out a rubber ink sack on the inside, which would hopefully draw ink up into the bag inside without splitting or exploding and leaking all in your pocket. And away you would go with your writing. That was sent to me by um, somebody who tunes into these videos and I thoroughly enjoy it. I absolutely love this pen. Look at it, beautiful, beautiful creation. Um, here's another pen that was uh, actually left last Christmas on the back of the boat so when I returned home from work or wherever I'd been in the daytime this was a gift left for me. This is a Parker pen. I'm not sure what model this is off the top of my head but I absolutely love the red and gold and black colour scheme on this. Another beautiful traditional style beautiful looking pen here um, and anything with red and gold always puts me in mind of ancient Rome so well, I'm a big fan of anything Roman and again it's just everything about it and the sort of marble effect as well even lends itself to that old Roman feel. Um, but I won't get too uh, over romantic with the uh, ancient world here. Uh, interestingly, this was pristine and unused when it was left as a gift for me with a receipt which I think was dated in the mid 90s. So even this is getting on for 30 years old, which is a scary thought that the mid 90s are that long ago. Um, so just on nostalgia, I've got uh, this. I'm not sure if this is a Parker IM. It's a Parker something. Again, simple pen. This nothing too um, too exciting to say. It's more of a nostalgia pen, that one, as it's what I wrote a lot of my original notes for old videos and books and stuff back in the day. Um, getting on to some of the pens I absolutely love, and this is where it's going to get exciting because we're going to fill this one. <gasps> um, this is a Lamy Safari pen which is your classic sort of Bauhaus design, this big clip on the lid. And uh, we'll look at that closer in just a second, as this is a Lamy Vista, but basically the Vista is just the Safari, but in clear plastic. So you can see it's practically identical. So if we pop the lid off, you can see here on this one, obviously the 
little bit of uh, mechanism and stuff, how the ink all uh, feeds through the handle or the finger grip there to go to the nib. And if we pop this back end off here, you can see this has got what's known as a piston converter cartridge on it. So basically, instead of a normal ink cartridge, this has got a piston, which as you twist that, would push the piston down, if it's empty of course, or if you want to get rid of all the ink out of it, then you would dip the nib into a bottle of ink, which is what we're going to do with the green one in just a second, twist it back to pull the plunger up, which would draw uh, ink right up through the pen and hopefully fill up the ink well in the back there. And again, absolutely beautiful pens. I think in terms of outright quality, um, to cost. The Lamy Vista Lamy Safaris are the absolute best pens around. Um, so we'll just quickly talk about some other pens here very very briefly. This is the Lamy Vista but as a simple clicky uh, ballpoint pen and there's something about this rubberized end here. As much as I love the pen it does give me the creeps a little bit. It makes me think of um, sort of medical equipment that end bit there um, and absolute classic pens here the ultimate sort of minimalist pens here these are cross classic centuries or cross century classics um, one in chrome silver and one obviously black and uh, black lacquer and gold and again the gold one massive nostalgia pen but these are simple twist mechanism oh I'm sorry I've just realized I'm they're knocking the tripod there with my arm um, twist mechanism to put the nib out and again nice and simple absolutely beautiful really small as you can see compared to a lot of the other pens here um, and ultimately this my friends is my favorite pen ever I've got to say this is the Twisby Eco and as you can see it's got this huge inkwell there if we pop the lid off you can see again beautiful beautiful little pen all clear plastic I really like this sort of modern design um, but what I love about this, not only have you got this huge, huge inkwell where you can literally see it, well, as you can see here, you can literally see the ink sloshing about inside. So that's something that I absolutely love, first of all. But the entire pen has, is basically like a piston converter cartridge. So you twist the end, that pushes this piston down to the bottom if it's empty or if you're just expelling the ink. Then obviously dip the nib, as I say, twist it back up and that draws a huge amount of ink up into the body of the pen. And I, I just absolutely love the look of it with the ink sloshing around, especially with this light turquoise sort of blue colour. Anyway, let's, um, let's bring this video to a close now by... Uh, fill in this pen so you can see what I'm talking about with these uh, piston converter cartridges. So we'll pop this the back end of this off. As you can see there's barely any ink that's uh, in there and this again has got a simple piston mechanism in it. I don't think there's much ink so I may risk just doing this in front of the camera here so that you can see if I hold on to that it might push a little bit of ink out but I think this is all relatively dried up. But as you can see, as I twist that, it's literally pushing that piston down into the body of the pen. Uh, it looks like we've survived yet. No ink or spraying out or dripping anywhere. So now we're going to take our green ink, which is what was already in this. Uh, this is Lamy ink. I've used all of the um, blotting paper out of that. But I really love these ink bottles because they've got this weird sort of shape here with the plastic uh, blotting paper section in the bottom there so you just have a roll of paper so obviously you can get the excess off and it's got a sort of waterproof backing so it doesn't all get on your fingers although um, that's not always guaranteed with uh, ink and pens so sorry I know that this camera is not quite stable I've just realized I haven't done the best job here right which way do I need to pull the ink up right so this is a simple dipping that into the ink yeah we'll just dip it straight in and now I am simply going to twist that, bring the plunger right up to the top. And you may be able to see how that's literally filled the entire thing pretty much with ink. It's just pulled it straight up through the body of the pen. If I try and fetch that, you can see this is what the blotting paper is for, basically to try and take all this excess ink away from the uh, base of the pen here. Oh, look at that, straight on my thumb. That was a poor, poor bit of pen control. Um, however, you can see, hopefully you can see, it's difficult to get this all angled properly with the light. 
but you can see how this is now filled with ink where it was almost empty only a moment ago and now if I just oh sorry I keep knocking this camera this video is going to be massive I've just got to accept that as you can see we are good to start writing immediately absolutely lovely stuff there so i suppose i better wrap this video up and say thank you very much for joining me for or for humoring me as i talk about something that i absolutely love with these glass pens and my general pen collection and why i love them it's just something so nice about sitting down writing and again just almost that meditative it's a calm quiet activity to participate in absolutely love it my friends so as i say thank you very much for tuning in I'll leave some links in the description to some of my other pen videos, doing my wax seals and stuff like that. Um, feel free to subscribe. You'll see a load of normal uh, boat life sort of videos, which are my mainstay on this channel. Please do check out the links in the description. You'll find my boat life books available for the Kindle and as a paperback if you would like to help me out. And you'll find loads of links to me all over social media, posting lots of canal scenery and just photos and clips from me being out and about in the wide world out there. Until the next time, my friends, keep it boat worthy, keep it interesting, keep it pen worthy, and of course, my friends, have a fantastic day and farewell.